Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about the uh, upcoming Coffee Lake line of processors from uh, Intel, which is going to be the 8000 series. Uh, we've gone from Skylake, the 6000 series, KB Lake is the 7000, and now Coffee Lake being the 8000 series. And we've known for a little while now that uh, Coffee Lake would bring us uh, higher core counts than we've seen from the mainstream line of processors in the past from Intel. Specifically, the uh, 700 series, so the 8700, 8700K, will feature 6 cores and 12 threads, as opposed to, in the past, the 7700, 7700K featured 4 cores and 8 threads. So we're getting 2 extra cores, 6 cores, and uh, 4 extra threads, so we'll be up to 12 threads total instead of the 8 threads that we've seen in past generations. But the added cores actually go across the board. So the i5s now will feature six cores instead of the quad cores that we've seen in the past. And now the i3s will be quad core parts. And uh, the i3s of the past obviously were two cores and four threads. Interestingly though, we will not see hyper threading in the i3s or the i5s. That will be reserved for apparently only the i7s. So a little bit of an interesting uh, play on things there. Now the chart we're going to be looking at for this video comes from an Antec and uh, the link for that is in the description below. Uh, but this chart does a really great job of summing everything up. Just know that an Antec is getting their uh, pricing from an online uh, pre-order site. Uh, in this case it is actually Lambda Tech which is apparently a United Kingdom retailer and then they are taking the prices that were given there and converting them to USD so these prices may not be exactly what we see at launch date for the 8000 series of processors so starting at the top of the stack we see the 8700k with a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz obviously unclocked being a k skew six cores 12 threads it will retail at least roughly for uh 400 at launch that's up 46 dollars from where the 7700k was but if you look at the far right hand column of the chart you see the price per core is obviously significantly better for most of the coffee lake processors compared to their kb lake counterparts additionally in the i7 line we have the 8700 with a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz again it's a locked processor not being a k skew but at 338 dollars uh you you do get uh quite a bit of performance out of that in fact that may be a little bit more interesting to some than the k skew simply because you also don't need a uh, motherboard that supports overclocking like you would for the 8700k to get your full money's worth out of that processor Moving on down the line, we have the 8600K at $284, the 8400 at $201, the 8350K, which is an i3 for $197, and then we have the i3-8100 at $130. Now, the most interesting area of uh, these new processors to me lies between the 8350K uh, and then the processors both above and below it, the 8400, the uh, i5, and then the 8100 below it. And for gamers, this is going to be a really interesting choice. We already know that modern games have a few aspects when you're, when you're sort of looking at CPUs to drive them. First of all, anything more than a quad core isn't going to be necessarily completely wasted, but you are definitely going to see diminished returns the more threads you add, especially past four. But uh, the more threads you add, you will see those diminished returns. So it'll be interesting to see how the 8400 stacks up against an overclocked 8350K because the 8350K, in addition to already having a way higher clock speed out of the box, the base clock being 2.8 on the i5 and 4.0 on the i3, you'll probably be able to get that 8350K with an overclock and decent cooling up to around the 4.5 gigahertz mark, if not a little bit better. So the IPC is going to come into play heavily there too, which is the other thing that games like. They like those high clock speeds. One of the reasons that Ryzen struggles in gaming versus its Intel counterparts is not because it lacks threads, because obviously uh, most Ryzen parts have more threads than their counterparts um, at their respective price ranges, but they, did, they lack the IPC and they also lack the high clock speeds that we've seen from KB Lake and even back to Sky Lake. And then the other interesting sort of uh, comparison here is going to be the i3-8350K versus the 8100. Now the 8350K comes out of the box with a 400 megahertz uh, clock speed increase over the 8100. Obviously you could push that higher though with an overclock, but then that motherboard will cost you more because you do need a, mo a motherboard that supports an overclock for the 8350K for you to again get that 
uh, your full money's worth out of the processor. Whereas the 8100, because it's not unlocked, you're sort of stuck with a 3.6 gigahertz, but you're also saving um, $67 in which case you could, depending on what your budget is, that's the difference between a GTX 1050 and a GTX 1050 Ti. So I would hypothesize that an 8100 paired with a GTX 1050 Ti would probably perform better than an 8350K overclocked with a 1050. And that difference in price point in, in a lot of the, the ranges of the GPUs are gonna allow you, if you decide to save the money by getting the 8100, you can reinvest it in getting the next step up for GPUs. So if you're at a 1050 Ti, you could uh, then afford a GTX 1060 if you get the 8100 and take that savings and apply it there. And same thing there, if you get a GTX 1060, you could probably afford the six gigabyte version over the three gigabyte version if you, again, take the 8100 over the 8350K. And for my money's worth for that matter, I would say that uh, just looking at the stack, if you are somebody that is using multi-threaded applications, so maybe you use some productivity work along with gaming. So maybe you're a streamer, uh, maybe you're a YouTuber, something that can use the extra uh, cores and threads. The 8700K and the 8700 both look like pretty solid options for you because I'm also willing to bet because of Intel's better IPC as well as clock speeds, the 8700K in, in applications like Premiere Pro uh, for Adobe or other productivity applications will probably um, outperform the Ryzen 8 core 16 thread parts. Uh, and it might even be by a little bit of a significant margin. Uh, so I would be willing to, to, to say that if you are productivity based, uh, the 8700K and the 8700 may be the route for you in the Coffee Lake lineup. But then beyond that, for the rest of everyone else that are just gamers or uh, gaming may be the heaviest task they do, the choice gets a little bit more muddled. The 8600K, I think, offers uh, better longevity, uh, especially with Ryzen parts being on the market. I would imagine uh, game producers are gonna start catering towards more threads being uh, fully utilized in games, and that'll be uh, at an engine level of optimization. So that will take some time, but I would imagine an 8600K today if you, if you bought it when it comes out on launch day, which I believe I saw was um, October 5th, I believe, uh, and then overclock that with a, an appropriate motherboard, that processor is gonna serve you very well for gaming for a very long time. The 8400 is a little bit tougher of a sell for me just because its clock speeds are so much lower than the rest of the stack. And I, I honestly think I would rather have the higher clock speeds of the 8350K because of the ability to overclock it, I think you probably might actually get better gaming performance, at least right now with the 8350K overclocked, simply because games take better advantage of uh, four cores than they will of six cores. And uh, like I said earlier, games do like that higher uh, clock speed and the 8400 just doesn't offer that. That being said, if you are in uh, sort of building a PC to get into PC gaming, and you're looking for the best performance now, uh, you may wanna even look at the 8100, uh, simply because if you're trying to get into PC gaming, you're likely on a budget, and again, by saving that $67 on just the processor, plus the money you save on the motherboard by not having to get a motherboard that uh, features overclocking as one of its feature sets, uh, you can then apply that money elsewhere in your build to whether it be more storage or if it were me, a uh, better graphics card, I think that would give you the best price to performance bang in the entire stack. And it'll be interesting to see what Intel does with the Coffee Lake based Pentiums, which I'm sure will be coming down the line at some point. Uh, I imagine those will be uh, sticking with the dual core quad thread lineup that we currently see from uh, things like the G4600. So there's no doubt about this, that Ryzen sort of forced Intel to shuffle things up just by adding a lot more uh, cores and threads than Intel was offering at a similar price point. And I think gamers and even people that are into uh, lighter productivity loads that uh, use their computers for both maybe work and gaming, um, everyone's gonna benefit from this because even though we're seeing across the board higher entry level price points, we're also getting more cores for that same price point. 
Um, a great example of that at the $354 launch point of the 7700K. For less than that, you can now get an 8700. Uh, and you will get, again, two extra cores, four extra threads. That's going to be big for those people that uh, do things in productivity, streaming, or whatever else the case may be. But having said all of that, let me know in the comments down below uh, if you're going to build a Coffee Lake system or Coffee Lake based system, which of these processors is the right ticket for you? Or for that matter, would you still go the AMD Ryzen route if for no other reason than to support a company other than Intel? So let me know in those comments down below. And since these processors aren't actually out yet, by the way, I'll go ahead and throw some links down below to processors that I would recommend if you are building a system today. However, my end recommendation, and I'll even put this in the description down below as well, is to wait for Coffee Lake so we can at least see reviews. Uh, they come out in just a couple weeks. It's probably worth waiting before you pull the trigger on any new CPU, at least right now. And as always, guys, if you like this content, go ahead and give me a like down below, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And I'll just go ahead and throw up a bunch of other videos from my YouTube channel on the screen now for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.